Good morning. I've developed a new role for myself as a minister of the gospel. I'm now called the shusher. When the music starts, we should shush. But you won't anyway, but I could try. Anyway. Uh, but it's lovely music. Anybody know what he was playing there? What was he playing? You know the chorus? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. Look full in his and the things of earth and the thing will grow strangely dim will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace oh do it let's do it one more time he's got the organ there we go turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonder So the royal colors of purple are out showing the kingship of our Lord. The cross has been removed. We're now on the other side of Easter. And the text today is, I just hope that I can just scratch the surface of it because it's wonderful. It's from John chapter 21, one of the pinnacle passages of the scriptures. And also today we're going to do something wonderful too. And that is we're going to have prayer over Esther and, and Tom Duan. Uh, our Chinese friends who are here from China, uh, and they are going to California next week uh, on Wednesday with the possibility of his doing something out there with the church. Uh, he's been a pastor of a church. Um, I'm, and so at, at an announced time, I'm going to have the elders come up and then we'll have prayer and have the laying on of hands. He's been a pastor in China for years and has, uh, been incarcerated five times, four times. Wow. So we're glad that they're part of our of our family, aren't we? Amen. And I don't know where Johnny is today, but he's their son. So all the piano lessons that he got, they saw that he got it, and what a <laughs> blessing that is to Amen. us. If you're visiting here today, welcome. I'm so glad to see you, and I hope that you'll want to come back. Uh, last, <laughs> I was surprised anybody came back today because last week they tell me that I really... I really put a bee in the bonnet of a lot of people about membership, church membership. Um, well, there are, and then, then on the way out, they said there were no, there are no things out there about how we could join. So I'm sorry, but I made sure that they're out there now. It's called, we wish you were here. You don't ever have to join this church. You don't ever have to join this church, but there are things coming up in the near future and the very near future that the members will be voting on. And I want you to have a part of that including the one who's going to be bringing sermons to you, messages, so that you need to have a part of that. If you, if, now, if you're a regular attender, that's fine. If you've got a church membership somewhere else, that's fine, too. But if you're local and you're here and this is your church, then go ahead. Put your membership in. It won't cost you anything. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, look in the bulletin. There in the bulletin is our call to worship. Are you ready to begin? I love this from, it comes from Ephesians and from the Psalms, and it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our first hymn is a happy song, number 575, and we'll hold the chorus 575 until we get towards the end. 575. <laughs>
watching my live stream, and so Eric's going to hit that light switch on the wall. Does it seem to be working? It, they're not working. Well, flip it two times. <laughs> One, two, the devil got in there. Uh, all right, but you, I guess my face will have to shine. Uh, I don't know what happened to it. Uh, anyway, uh, and, but everything else is working, right? Yeah, everything else is working. All right, the piano's electric and everything's working, and okay. <laughs> and I am a robot. <laughs> Isn't that amazing how you go online and it says, you're talking to a robot to say that you're not a robot. You know that, don't you? <laughs> you have to prove to the robot that you're not a robot. <laughs> Ridiculous. All right, our next hymn that we're going to sing is 552, I am thine, O Lord. 552, hold the chorus till the third stanza. <laughs> I want to rise in the arms of faith. 
Father, we come to invoke your presence and your blessing upon us as we've gathered together today. Thank you for the salvation that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, O Lord, that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit joined in love one for the other, and that together you have planned our salvation. For the Father thought of our salvation, and we bless you. And the Son has bought our salvation, and we bless the Lord Jesus. And blessed Holy Spirit, now you have come and you have brought our salvation. So we are triply saved by the divine decree, past and eternity past, that you would not allow all creation to be lost and forever in the darkness of the absence of your presence. But you determined to save a people for your name's sake. And so we thank you for the church of Jesus Christ that wears many names in many countries and yet the common thread is the family of God, for by faith in Jesus Christ, we are spiritually one church. And Christ is the shepherd of one church, one flock, and we are brothers and sisters throughout the world. Bless now, we pray, thee, our gathering here today. Let your name be known and appreciated. Let the scriptures come alive in our hearts. Help us to see new things that we have not seen before. And bless us in our fellowship and our spiritual growth that we might be ever more like the Lord Jesus. Lift up, O oh God, our hearts that we might give you praise. Overcome the dullness of our spirits and help us to be super excited that we are in the house of God with the people of God in this part of the vineyard and that together we may praise you. Bless the missionaries of the cross, especially those we support, wherever the name of Jesus is lifted up. Give grace to them. Don't let them be discouraged or downhearted, even though it seems the harvest is so few. Bless, O oh Lord, this country. Bring it about to its senses to love you, to love life, and to cherish life in the things that promote life and freedom. Hear our prayer today, for we ask it for one another, whatever we're going through. Some of us are on the mountain peak of joy and fellowship and Others, oh God, have to struggle through the valleys, through the rocky streams that we have to cross. Bless, O oh Lord, and give us your Holy Spirit to enable us, and let us know that we are prayed for by one another. Now hear us as we pray the prayer which Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you can, while I'm going to get you to stand up, I'm going to ask the Dwans to come forward. Wendy's going to bring them, and the elders of the church to come forward here on these front benches so that we can have a special prayer. Meanwhile, can you stand from where you are and give somebody a greeting? God loves you, so do I. <laughs>
seated. The elders remain standing, please, for just a moment. Tom and Esther, we love you. And we know that you love Jesus. And because of that, you're getting ready to take a trip to California. And we don't know what the Lord has for you in California, but we want to pray for you. So come stand over here with me, right here. Elders, would you put your hands on them, please? Congregation, will you stand as we commission them? Almighty God, we ask your blessings upon Tom and Esther as they leave us to go to California, not knowing what the future holds, but we commit them to you and thank you for their life, for their testimony. And we give them, O oh Lord, the blessing that you have given the church, that where two or three are gathered together, and when two or three agree on earth, it shall be done in heaven. Open the door for them for ministry in California, if it pleases you. Or return them back to us, and we shall love them until you open new doors for them. Thank you for their life, for their testimony. And for all that they love for you, we thank you and give you thanks. Hear our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 God bless you as you go with God. God bless you, brother. Yes, okay. Thank you, elders. Thank you, congregation. We are so happy to have them here. Now you may be seated, congregation. Thank you. You know, there are different there are different postures that the church can take. If you notice, there are no kneeling benches in here. Um, that's because if we got down, we couldn't get up. <laughs> but prayer can be offered. Uh, years ago, when Drew was a child, I, I went in and he was already in bed, and I said, oh, we have to pray. I said, we need to get down and pray. And he said, why do we have to get down and pray? I said, because God is a great king, and we should kneel. As long as you can kneel, do it. I can't do it. I can't. But I have to trust the guy when he shines my shoes that he really did it. <laughs> But the posture, the Lord sees whatever posture it is. I have you stand every once in a while. I let you, you know, most churches, they make you stand up for the singing. Well, we used to do that. I do it. Incidentally, if you'll notice, when I come up to the pulpit, I can climb up pretty good. If you watch me afterwards, it's a little bit more difficult for me to get down. Going down is more difficult than going up. But one of the reasons is when I stand this long, my knees lock. And I've got to get them in circulation again to, to keep moving. Did somebody else say, no, don't raise your hand. <laughs> uh, oh, Rabbi Ben Ezra is the name of the poem that was written in the, that has this wonderful line, it grow old along with me, the best is yet to be, the last of life for which the first was made, youth is but a part, and I thought, oh, what a liar that guy was. <laughs> anyway, uh, but we're so glad you're here today. If you're a visitor, put a, a little card in the offer plate. I'll send you a letter of welcome. I just saw that somebody was here, and I just saw the name, and I didn't send them a letter of welcome. But I'll try to do that because we want to be a friendly church. So uh, look at the announcements that are in the bullet today. Number one announcement, I think, is the in the box there that the men of the church that have been meeting on Monday mornings decided they would meet on Thursday this week, uh, not tomorrow, but Thursday, uh, at the Cracker Barrel on 18th, I don't know if it's Avenue or Street, but it's across from the Home Depot. Uh, and they're gonna meet there at nine o'clock for breakfast, and I think we'll have a good time there uh, as they look at August 2nd's reading for unbelievable resources. Even if you haven't gotten the book or don't have the ability to uh, see that passage, come anyway. Uh, all the men and we'll have a good time. Eagles Club now is in its 34th year and Jennifer Kim, thank you. She joined our club this last week and we're grateful for those who do uh, are able to join it. Birthdays and anniversaries are listed for you there. So take a look at that. I wanna have a, a short reading of scripture. I just wanna read the first uh, 10 verses on the back of your bulletin there. I've underscored some things and that way uh, we can get through that and then we'll 
uh, we'll sing another song. This is from the Gospel according to St. John. This is the disciple whom Jesus loved in a special way. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and in this way he showed himself. Simon, Peter, Thomas, the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, that would be James and John, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we're going with you also. And they went out and immediately got into the boat and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning, when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And then Jesus said to them, boys, have you caught anything? And they answered, no. And he said to them, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. So they cast and they now, they were able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, now who's that? That's John. That disciple whom Jesus loved, put two and two together is what he did. And he said to Peter, it's the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment for he removed it. He was in his skivvies when he was fishing. So he put on something else and he plunged into the sea. But the other disciples, they came in the little boat for they were not far from land, about 200 cubits, that's a football field, 100 yards dragging the net with the fish. They couldn't get them in the boat. Then as soon as they came to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you've just caught. May the Lord bless this part of the reading from his own holy and inspired word. Let's look to him as we bring our tithes and offerings and the hymn that we'll sing for that is Break Thou the Bread of Life, and it's number 413.
much as we can do nothing of our own as ought to be done. We come to you to ask grace as we present to you, knowing you are a great king in need of nothing. For you have said in your word, the gold is mine, the silver is mine, the cattle upon a thousand hills. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. But you allow us to come, you allow us to bring, you allow us to worship. Bless the gifts we give to you, that there may be provision in this place to do all your holy will, and extending from these four walls, there might be the ministry of mercy and salvation through the ministries we support. So bless us, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. share it with other people too. Hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, the lesson now is the 21st chapter of John's Gospel. This is one of the pinnacle passages in all the scriptures. John says this is the third time our Lord appeared. However, I'm not really sure because it might be the third time that he's recording the appearances of Jesus. I'm not sure exactly what day this was, but remember when he told the disciples when he rose from the dead, he told the women, go tell my disciples that I go before you into the Galilee. Now that's up north. So he's, he's up in the Jupiter near a beach area for us uh, who are here in Jerusalem. He's, he's up there and he's by the seaside. The Lake of Gennesaret is called the Sea of Tiberias. And uh, it's a very, it, did you know it's 700 feet, 693 feet below sea level. It's the second lowest sea level sea in the world. And of course, the one that is the lowest is called the what? Yeah, the sea. Dead Sea, and it has no, no life in it. It's too salty. Water flows in, but doesn't flow out. But the Sea, the sea of Galilee had uh, at least 25 uh, species of fish in it. And so here are the disciples, they're in obedience to him. Now what I want to marvel at is 
uh, the ones that John identifies here, and we're going to see why he does all of this. It's, it's marvelous, I think. First, there's uncertainty. Jesus said, go there, but where is he? You're waiting and waiting and waiting. You know, one of the hardest things in the world is to wait on the Lord. You believe you have the Lord's word, but you're waiting to see what he'll do. You're waiting for circumstances to line up. You're waiting for things to happen. Right. And it's very difficult to be waiting on the Lord. As a matter of fact, there was a song that we used to sing, and Betsy and I were thinking about it this morning. I asked her if she could finish the, the song. You keep me waiting till it's getting aggravating. <laughs> you remember that song? No, you never heard it? You keep me waiting till it's getting aggravating. You're a slow poke. <laughs> I wait and worry, but you never seem to hurry. You're a slow poke, dear. Why should I keep trying to change you? That's not the thing to do. I guess I'll have to learn to be a slow poke, too. Now, how do you remember it? You are so old. <laughs> they were great songs back then. I, I love them. Well, here, you know, the hardest thing is to wait on the Lord, isn't it? Now, let me tell you, as we come to this passage of Scripture, there's some wonderful words in there. You know, they've been out there fishing. They've been waiting on the Lord. Well, what do we do? Nothing. There's no sports on the TV. There wasn't anything they do. Finally, Peter said, I go fishing. Now, why did he say that? Well, he was a fisherman. And you know, to be a fisherman, you have to learn to have lots of days of disappointment. Because you fish, but you might not get anything. I've only been fishing a few times in my life. Uh, incidentally, I'm a miracle fisherman. I don't know whether you know that or not. When I was in college, we had a lake at Belhaven College, a beautiful campus, and in that lake there were turtles. And every spring, the little baby turtles would hatch. And this minister used to take a canoe and sit in the back of the canoe, which was, but I faced forward, so was, because that's the seat closest to the back. And I went paddle silently over all this green stuff floating on top. And then they'd poke their little green heads up. Aww. And I would grab them. <laughs> and I sold them to the dime store. I got 18 cents a piece for them. I had 50, sometimes 70 little turtles, and I, and I sold them. Uh, and that's what I used to do. Well, one day I was there with my friend Tom Elkin, who became a psychoanalyst, and he's now retired. And he was in the back of the boat, and I was in the front of the boat, we were looking for turtles. And suddenly there flopped in the boat a five pound, four ounce bass. Now, is that a fishing story? <laughs> it's a true story. He, we, we got we were so close to the shore that he was trapped. He jumped, tried to go over the canoe, but he landed in the boat, and we got him. Oh. And we ate him. <laughs> we took him up to the cafeteria, and the cooks were glad to do it for us. They cooked him, they cooked him for us, and we enjoyed that five. Now, that's a fishing story. If you're a fisherman, you've got, I'm sure you've got stories. But here's a story, too, about these disciples went out there. And they fished. Now, another reason I think they went was, Remember how Jesus supported himself while he was in ministry? They had some women that came along and contributed to the cause. Well, now that the cross has happened, uh, the, the, the offerings have quit, and they've got to support themselves. Well, how did they know how to, well, Peter said, well, I was a fisherman, I've always been a fisherman. So he decided to go fish, and that would help support. Now, I also like this, this is a wonderful reading, it says here, John records who went out there. Simon Peter, notice he's calling him Simon Peter now. The last thing we saw about Peter was publicly that he had denied the Lord. Thomas the twin, now we talked about him last week. He was the one who had missed the first appearance of Jesus and finally and when he saw him he said, my Lord and my God. And then, so he was there, he went fishing. And Nathaniel of Cana of Galilee, he went. And James and John, they went. And I love this part. Two others of his disciples went together, and they're unnamed. And you know what? God did that for all the unnamed people in the world who've done so much for the kingdom of God, but they don't get any public credit for it. 
to paint the people who work in silence. They do things quietly, anonymously. God sees it. If he sees who gives them a glass of cold water in his name, and they don't go without reward, then here are these fishermen, the two of them, unnamed, they went to. And I went over the list to try to find out, I wonder who it could be. Well, the ones who went with it were Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, James, John, and these two others. So who's missing? Matthew's missing. Well, of course, Matthew wasn't a fisherman. He was a tax collector. And why did they have, they, they, they catch 153 fish. Why'd they count them? Why'd they count the fish, 153? Well, if you get that many, you're gonna brag about it a little bit, but that's not it. Remember, Matthew was into um, taxing, and what did they tax? He, he was by the seaside. The fishermen had to pay tax over the fish that they caught. So there was always just built into the whole idea of fishing that you count the number of fish. But I'm gonna tell you another reason too. So here, who's missing? Matthew's missing, Thaddeus is missing. Now Thaddeus is called Jude, but he's called the other, Thaddeus is his nickname, he's missing. He could have been one of the two, Matthew could have been one of the two. Or James, the son of Alphaeus, he was missing. He could have been there too. And Philip, we don't know where Philip was, but anytime time you see Nathaniel, usually he's his best friend is, is Philip. So he might have been one of the others. We don't know who the others were. And I love things that happen that we don't always know. You came across the driveway today when we were getting ready to come into this refurbished chapel, which was the garage. The county told me that you can't get a certificate of occupancy because your entrance is too narrow. And I said, oh no, what will we do? I said, well, we'll just extend the, it was a bridge with a canal on both sides, we'll just extend it four feet. And the county said, you can't do that because we've changed the size of the culvert underneath of it from 36 inches to 48 inches. We were looking at big bucks. So I told it to the elders and told the congregation, we, we didn't know what we were gonna do. We were meeting in the palm room here, but we couldn't come in here. And a man came up to me afterwards, he said, you know, I know you have a problem with that. He said, I need you to pray for something. I said, what is it? He said, you know, the government has shut down. And it was one of those times when the government had been closed. Mm -hmm. And he said, the government shut down. He said, I own warehouses, government warehouses in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to lose everything I've got because the government can't pay me and I can't pay the rent. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let's just pray right now. So we had prayer. You know that the next Monday, the government opened up again. The two houses, the Congress and the, and they got together and they worked out a deal and the government opened up. On Friday, there was a check in the mail for $35,000, wow. anonymously given. But I suspect, and I'll find out when I get to him, I think it was the guy who had the warehouses because mm -hmm. nobody in our crowd then had 35,000. Mm -hmm. And then he gave it anonymously. So that was wow. beautiful. Anonymous giving is a wonderful thing. I don't like it. And I said, I don't like anonymous giving. You know why? Because then I have to be nice to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so here they are, and their, their income is dried up. He said, I go fishing. So he goes, some, some of the uh, men are there, some are not there. And, and also remember this, the treasurer of the church has committed suicide. So that wasn't a good thing. So nobody knew, nobody could write a check. And so Peter said, I, I go fishing. And so he sets out to go fishing. Now, one of the wonderful things about this gospel of John is it opens up with these words in John, I think it's 139, when Andrew and, and John are following Jesus. John the Baptist has said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he kind of pointed at him. And Jesus turned around and began to walk away. And so James and John, uh, they follow, uh, Andrew and John, they follow him. And Jesus turns around. Do you ever get the feeling somebody's looking at you? <laughs> I get that sometimes. And you turn around and, and your eyes lock, you see? I don't know how that happens, but it does. Jesus turned around and he said, first words of Jesus, what are you looking for? Isn't that amazing? You're here today, the same words of Jesus. What, what, what are you really looking for? And, and so they said to him, where are you dwelling? And he said, hear the words, come and see, come and see. That's the first words. 
Now hear the last chapter of the book, and he's going to say this, come and die. So you come and see, and now through all the chapters of the history of Christ and his miracles and all this, you're getting to know him better. You're seeing the great love that he has in his heart for those who put their trust in him. Now at the very end, he says, come on, sit down. You know, eating together is better than just looking at somebody. I can see you, but I'm not eating with you. But if you eat together, you're at the same table. You have the same food. And so Peter says, I, I go fishing. Anybody want to go along? Now, I'm a terrible fisherman. If it doesn't jump in the boat, I'm not going to go further. <laughs> you, to be a fisherman, you've got to be, a, a, it's uncertain, isn't it? You may go and not catch a thing. Or you may go and have a great haul. And so it requires patience. Patience. And that's why we sang that song, You Keep Me Waiting Till It's Getting Aggravating. I tell the Lord sometimes, Lord, I'm so busy and I, I need you to hurry and you're taking your time. Mm -hmm. And the Lord wants to say, slow down. I'm in control. When things in your life aren't happening as quickly as you think that they should, slow down. God's in control. Mm -hmm. He's taking care of things. He opens doors like you haven't seen. Mm -hmm. And in the Bible, he's done this all along. David, he had to wait 15 years from the day that, the Apollo, the, that Samuel said to him, I anoint thee king over Israel. 15 years of that. Well, David went out that day. He was a teenager. He thought, wow, this is pretty neat. But don't tell anybody yet, Samuel said. Don't tell anybody. He had no idea he was going to be pursued and nearly killed. For 15 years, he was pursued by the king. Or Joseph. He, Joseph had this wonderful dream. I, I dreamed about these sheets, and they all bowed down to my sheep. I dreamed about these stars, and they all bowed down. My star was the brightest. And then Joseph had to spend 13 years in prison before he got to be the premier of Egypt. You see how God works? None of the ways we work. How about poor Moses? He had to wait 40 years in the desert. And then God appeared to him. I love this story about Moses. Remember he was brought and raised up in Pharaoh's palace? One day God said to Moses, Moses, what do you have here? He said, I've got horses. I've got chariots. I'm the one who makes the deals with all the nations. They found his name on Cuneiform. He made all the deals with all the nations. Egypt was the pristine nation of the, of the area, of the, of the world. And God said, Moses, look down in the future. What do you see? He said, I just see some people, scraggly people. And they're down there in the desert. They're living in tents. And they're unhappy. And, uh, and God said, Moses, that's where I am. I'm going to be there with those people. And so Moses, the Bible says that he turned his back on the glory that was, Hebrew says this to the rope of the faithful. Moses turned his back on the glory of Egypt that he might deal with the people of God in the desert, in the scraggly, scraggly people in the desert. So God keeps his people waiting, doesn't he? He keeps the, Jesus waited 30 years before he began his ministry. And all these things happened. Abraham had to wait 25 years before his son was born. Has God asked you to wait for things? In my life, he has. And I'm most impatient. Don't ask God for patience because there's only one way to learn it. And that's to put you through a little bit of suffering. So what do we do? So they went fishing, and you know that? They fished all night, and then they caught nothing. I love this passage of Scripture. Fishermen expect disappointment, but boy, they sure thought they'd get some. Now, why'd they go at night? Well, probably late afternoon, the sun was down, they thought it'd be cooler. So they went at night, and they probably had a lantern. They probably had a light to attract the fish to it, but no fish came. Then first thing in the morning, the seven all board the little ship. They looked up, and they see somebody on shore at the length of a football field. They all know where that is. It's 100 yards. That's what 200 cubits is. They see a figure on the shore. They see smoke coming up. There's a fire going. <laughs> and then the voice comes out. Hey, boys! Have you caught anything? <laughs> they said, no. Put your net on the right side. Oh, what is this? <laughs> so they, but they well, we got nothing to lose. That's the first step to coming to Christ is you've got nothing to lose. Right. Everything to gain and nothing to lose. What if we come to the end of life and we find out this is all a hoax and it isn't real and there's nothing there? Well, you won't know it if there's nothing there and you're dead. You still have had a better life. You still have had the joy of the Lord. You still have had fellowship with one another. You still have known that there's a God who cares for you. At least you believe that. 
but it is real. It is true. Why? Because he rose from the dead and he's there. And they've seen him. The evidence is there. Even the skeptics have seen it. So now, uh, he says, cast her down on the right side. So that's what they did. And this tells me two things. One is, they obeyed him in blind unbelief after their disappointment. I've tried everything. I'm tired. My back hurts. My feet hurt. I'm all wet from the sea spray. The salt is dried on my lips. But I'll do it anyway. That's the attitude. So they obey him. The next thing tells me this is, do you believe in the sovereignty of God? Because if you don't, there's no reason to pray. I believe in a God who has everything planned, but it's planned in such a concentric way that he doesn't do violation to your will. Uh, he can change your will if he wants to. Don't say, oh, God won't violate your will. He, he can come in and he can change you pretty fast. When the Hittites didn't want to abandon the land that God wanted to give to the Israelites, he, he changed their will. You know how he did it? He sent hornets. And suddenly they said, we're not leaving it. Well, I think we'll leave this place. This is the hornets are too much for us to bear with. And Saul of Tarsus, he went out there to, he was going to go arrest people. He comes into the city. He's humble. God can do that. He changes the sinner's heart. Well, if you're hearing this, you say, well, my heart's never been changed. But well, God can change your heart. Ask him to. To say, Lord, change my heart so that I'm from sincerity. Not because pretty music is played. I've been in churches where they gave these calls and invitations. And they would give the invitation. And then nobody would come down the aisle. They'd say, oh, okay, if you, if you love your mother, would you come down today? <laughs> you know, they get into all the it's pretty music. They make you feel, no, you can't abide by just emotion. If you can say from your heart, I believe Jesus Christ is my Lord, sovereign master and savior, and I believe in him. I put my trust in him. Then the Bible says, you're saved. Because you can't do this unless the Holy Spirit does it. You can't work it up. You can't work it up. You can't pass it on. But if you pray for anybody, Lord, my children, open their hearts, oh God, then you're believing in the sovereignty of God. If you didn't believe in the sovereignty of God, then you'd be praying to the child. Say, oh, please, please, open your heart, open your heart, open your heart. But if you're praying, you're asking God to do something. So I'm in there, work circumstances, put the screws on them, give them sugar, give them whatever they need to bring them to that place where they know they need Jesus. And so here now, I love this. You know, they, they said, we haven't caught nothing. And so John, he recognizes the voice and he says, Peter, it's the Lord. Mm. It's the it's a God thing. Things happen in your life that have to be a God thing. And he says, it's the Lord. When Peter realized that, he realized that his Calvin Klein underwear wasn't sufficient. So he, he, put, <laughs> he put something else on and dove into the water. He, the Bible says he plunged into the water and he swam. He out and swam the boat, got there first. He got to see Jesus. At the, at, at, now, I told you two parts of the sovereignty of God. Jesus knew where the boat would be. Sure. He had seen them in the night. Well, wait a minute. He knew that they'd be coming in. Why do I know that? He had the coals going and the fire going. He had the fish being fried. And notice what he gives them, protein and carbohydrates. <laughs> that makes Dr. Jim happy. Protein and carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Fish of protein. Carbohydrates to burn the protein. He had bread too. You can't have fish with that. And I believe it could have been. You know, Jesus is from Jerusalem. It's a southern part. Of it. it was probably in a casserole of some type. I'm not sure. But he had that. For the, and they all came there and they sat down and they ate. I've got to move quickly now. They came in. <coughs> and they couldn't bring the fish into the boat. There were too many of them. So they just dragged them in the net behind them. And the net wasn't broken. And they got there. And so Jesus turns to Peter and he says, why don't you help to bring the fish in? Peter jumps up. And he hauls in, tells us Peter's very strong, that he hauls in the net, and it says there were 153. Mm. When you were a child, and when I was a child, I listened to the radio, and they had all these giveaway things, Captain Midnight, and all you had to do is get the box top of cereal and get a decoder ring. And a decoder ring would be something like this. In the alphabet, A, B, C, D. A is one, B is two, C is three, D is four. 
So if the letters came up for the special buddies in the program of, of, of two and four, I knew that it was talking about B and C, something about that. That's the decoder ring. The Hebrew alphabet is built on a decoder system and every letter corresponds to a number. The Aleph is one, the Beth, is, they're all numbered like this. It's fun to play with the Bible, but you gotta be careful. So don't get mixed up, but there's an acrostic. They brought in 153 fish. If A equals one, which would, then would be Aleph, and Tau would be 22. If you worked it out in the Hebrew letters, it comes to the words, Ani Elohim, I am God. Hmm. Well, that just shivers down my spine. I am God. Now, I read this by my Hebrew missionary, and he said, just don't get too involved. There are a lot of people, a lot of books out about the mystery of the Bible. Don't go too far. But it is true that the Hebrews do have this special thing where they tie the letter to the number. Hmm. And so now they've all had something to eat. Up until now, Peter has been there with the crowd, but he hasn't been up close. It's kind of been in the distance. He doesn't want to be one-on-one -on -one yet with Jesus. And so now Jesus says, Peter, I need to walk with you. And so Peter gets up, and it's a private conversation. He's not going to embarrass him. It could have been public in order to restore Peter in the sight of the public, because they all knew it. To the extent a sin is known, to that extent it needs to be repented of and, and then forgiven. And they all knew what Peter had done. They were all aware of it. So it could have been in the crowd that he said, Peter, son of Jonas, and, notice, and he calls him Simon, son of Jonas. He doesn't call him by his strong name, rock, piece of rock. Do you love me more than these? And he's looking at the apostles. And Peter says, Lord, you know I'm fond of you. He couldn't say he loved him. The word in the Greek is translated love, but it's a lesser love. And Jesus says, feed my lambs. Peter, son of John, lovest thou me more than these? Lord, though all forsake thee, yet will I not forsake thee. Art thou one of his? No, and he denied not once, but twice, three times. Now Jesus is erasing that by this affirmation, I am forgiven and restored. Christ restores. That's the most beautiful thing there is. And let me tell you this. Jesus put it this way. The problem today with some people in the church is they didn't sin enough. Because the more you sin and know you're forgiven, the more you love. So I'm thankful for those of you who were raised in Christian homes and you never did anything really bad. I've done some really bad stuff. And I love Jesus because of that bad stuff. And if you haven't done enough bad stuff, just keep reading the scriptures and he'll keep showing you the flaws mm. and then you'll realize But Jesus said this, he who sinneth much loveth much. Mm. And so Peter now three times, you love me, feed my sheep. Then he says, feed my lambs, tend my sheep. That means look after the young ones, the lambs, look after the older ones, feed the lambs. Now what, what in the world does a fisherman feed people? When Jesus says, feed them, tend them, he means this, the word. You're going to have to preach the word to them. And the word's going to be the truth of Christ. It'll be the gospel. Does Peter do that? Yes. There are two books in the Bible, first and second Peter. The first one, he had a fellow named John Mark was with him. And so Peter dictated the story of his life and Mark wrote it down. The second time Peter's in prison, Mark's not there. How do I know that? because the Greek of the second letter is rough Greek. It's not as polished as the first. And so we know that Mark wasn't there. So Peter obeys and Jesus says, feed, tend, love my sheep, and that's it. And he's restored, he's restored. And then Peter saw John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And it's only natural to say, well, I know what's happening to me, Lord. Thank you, but what, what are you gonna do with him? Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, it's none of your business. That's what he says. It's none of your business. If I will that he should be alive till I come back, then he said, then I can do that. And so now John says, you know, there are many things I could have talked about, but I've selected these things 
so that you who might be skeptical, might be ignorant of some of it, might believe that Jesus is the promised Messiah and that by believing in him, you might have life in his name. And now we're on the other side of that. Most of us have committed our lives to Christ. Now what does it mean? And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. If you know him, if you don't know him, ask him to come in. That's what he said. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. I want to close by reading, instead of singing a hymn, I want to just close with, with, a, with a poem that I, that I found that I love. Are you weary? Are you burdened? Are you sore distressed? Come to me, says one, and come and be at rest. But has he marched to lead me to him? If he is to be my guide, Oh, in his feet and hands are moon prints and his side. Has he a diadem as a monarch that his brow adorns? <laughs> yes, a crown in very surety, but it's made of thorns. If I find him and if I follow, what shall I find here? <laughs> many sorrows, many labors, many tears. If I still hold closely to him, what has he at last? Oh, all sorrow vanished. Labor ended. Jordan safely passed. If I ask him to receive me, will he say me nay? Not till earth and not till heaven pass away. Finding, following, keeping, struggling. Is he sure to bless? Saints, apostles, prophets, martyrs all shout yes let's pray together thank you father for bringing us here today to this good place where your word has been a delight to us and you've opened our hearts to all the things of christ we bless you lord for loving us and now we ask you to take us on our way that christ might be our savior and our lord that he might control our actions and we might be more and more united to your kingdom for we pray in christ's name Amen. Amen. Would you stand, receive the benediction, and then we'll have the cause he lives. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you means the smile of his face. And may God help you to hear his words whisper deep in your soul where only you and God live. Well done, good and faithful servant. I see you struggling in the mists of the mystery of life. Be not afraid. I'm in the mist. I'm in the mystery. And may God give you his perfect peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together because he lives, I can face tomorrow.